Hey everyone, this is Tim, Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church, and welcome to another edition of the Word of Life Church Video Ministries. Hope everyone is doing well, and as always, most importantly, that you are saved and walking in the will of God. Amen. I'd like to say, most important thing you can possess, possess in this life is salvation. Amen. And we know that in the end, that is the only choice, only decision you make on this side of eternity that is going to matter amen above all things you decide do possess in this life gain that's the only thing that's going to matter in the end amen and i hope you've made that choice amen i hope you've accepted the free gift the free, free pardon of sin amen that the lord jesus gives you amen by his death on the cross amen the free gift that he afforded to us amen by his his free gift of salvation you know, no other person, no, no other, no other way. Amen. No, it's just, it's just, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And there's no other way to the Father except through him. Amen. He is the door to the sheep. Photo said, if you try to go up another way, same as a thief, a thief and the robber, uh, a thief and a robber. Amen. No, it, it won't work. There's nothing else you can do. No other things you can know you can't meditate your way up there you can't go to another god and uh there's because there's no other god to go to amen there's the father the son and the holy ghost amen there's the you know there's jehovah the almighty the god of gods amen and all their gods are either false idols amen or lower g gods you know fallen angels, demonic spirits that pose as gods, that would, that would love to be God, he, you know, the devil, he would love to be God, amen, even though he's, he is the lower G, God, and as it puts it in the Bible, the God of this present worldly fallen system that we have to trudge through each and every day, but oh, thank the Lord that he is there with us every day, we're saved and walking in his will, amen. He is there with us every day to lift us above all that <laughs> nastiness and junk that's in the world every day. Amen. He's there with us in the valleys, climbing the mountains, on the mountaintops, and all the way, just like that, each and every step of the way. He is with us. Amen. The song. There's another song. I do a lot of times when I don't say these things. That there's, uh, like I catch parts of different uh, songs. You know, that he is with us. He is with us. You know, I can't, can't remember the uh, lyrics of the song. I just remember the, the, those words. Uh, it's a good song though. <laughs> but anyway, he is. He's with us all the time. Amen. And as as I said, we we should recognize that that privilege. Amen. That. God is with us and he has his ear attentive to us at all times if we just take advantage of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We've got the God of all creation, of all reality that made you. And I, that made, I'm pointing out the window to, to the creation, the world out here, that made all this, that spoke all this into existence. Amen. The, oh, that wrapped himself up. You know, I like how Brother Tony puts this, wrapped himself up in human flesh and come down here. Died for us, amen. So very true. Because he loved us so much, his creation, amen. That were made in his image, amen. He loved us so much that we had to be reconciled, amen. That bridge had to be made that we could make our way back to him. Oh, it wasn't, as I said before, it wasn't that he recognized that all of a sudden he knew that he had to make a better way because <laughs> he knew that from eternity past. He knew that this was the way that it was going to happen. 
as we say people question why did he have to do it? why does that to be this way why did because he's God and that's the way he wanted it amen we don't make excuses like I said don't make excuses for God anymore used to say well you know maybe he wanted to do it this way and you know maybe he because uh, he wanted to do it this way because man and this and, that and this and just make excuse after excuse after excuse people don't make excuses for God anymore because a lot of people they don't even want to hear the excuses they're just wanting they don't want to hear the truth at all they're just wanting to try to stump you they're wanting to try to get you off track they're not they're not wanting really to have an answer to begin with amen let the spirit of God lead you to a person and the spirit of God might lead the person to you that's truly wanting and you'll know if you're sensitive to the spirit of God amen and God is using you, amen, which he, if you're saved, you have the ministry, amen, to go out and spread the gospel, amen, to share the gospel with this lost and dying world, amen. Send someone with you and the Spirit of God will start stirring inside of you. You'll know the person. A lot of times you'll know if the person is just wanting to sit there and just bump heads with you, amen whether or not that they are truly wanting to know truly in search of something and and some and a lot of people are in search of things nowadays because of the way the world has gone because of this pandemic and you know and we're not as we say we're not given the uh, so, we said it so many times I feel like we're a broken record but it's the word of God and we're going to stand on it He's not giving us a spirit of fear. I'm not afraid of this, this virus, this or whatever they say it could possibly mutate into. Now, what they use it for could be a different story. It could lead to other things. Does that mean I'm scared? No. I'm scared of anything that's going to happen in this flesh. I've got a home waiting for me on the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in this flesh. What's going to happen? Doesn't matter. It could happen in twenty, a hundred other different ways. Amen. We're just passing through this period of time in this side of eternity. 70, 80, 90 years, maybe less. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is we get the word of God out, amen, and reach other souls that, that way they can be prepared for when it is their time. For when God calls them, amen. As we know, the Word of God tells us we're going to all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. To give an account of all the things that we have done while we were in this body. Amen. While we were down here in our time here during this planet. Amen. And we know that we're all going to bow before the Lord. Amen. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Oh, we're going to recognize who the Lord Jesus is. <laughs> Amen. Whether or not you like it or not, people, monitor, if you look at this and you, you do that, like that, oh, don't worry. One of these days, you're going to realize who it is that you denied, who it is you scorned, who it is you didn't want to believe in, who it, whatever. You're going to realize the mistake you made. Not that I wish that on anybody. No, no, no. But you to recognize who that is and how much he loved you enough to die for you that you could have eternal life why would you want to resist and shed off eternal life well I have to quit doing my stuff I have to quit having fun what fun are you having the sin that you're having that so-called fun you're saying that sin is only fun for a season amen one of these days it could lead to something that you're not ready for amen could lead to something oh let's say something a sickness amen that's going to lead to eventual death that you're not wanting that you didn't want to begin with could lead to a prison sentence amen that you don't want that you're not ready for many other things your friends, your family leaving you, amen. Sin is only fun for a season. The devil, these demonic spirits that lead you, amen, and this flesh that's a slave to the sins, amen. 
and the things of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, amen. Those things are against God. God doesn't like them. He can't stand them, amen, that we're a slave to. Not after you were saved. Oh, they try to come back. It's where the Spirit of God, you have to know. You have to be saved. You have to be filled with the Spirit to, re to resist those things. Amen. Are we always successful? Unfortunately, no. But that's where we have forgiveness. Amen. And grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for grace and mercy. Praise God. So while we're on this journey down through here in this world, just pilgrims passing, passing through. It's, you know, once we realized it, and once we realized that we needed a Savior, amen, and we understood we're just passing through this, this, this point in this area in time, and realize we say, oh, this, and I, you know, still, and I used to say it as well. And I'm not saying anybody that says this is, it, oh, you're, that's, you know, that's wrong. That's wrong for you to say. No, it's just something that when someone says that I used to say it, I'm thinking, no, nah, I don't, you know, I, 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 I kind of say it a different way now. People say, oh, it's just, you know, we're just a drop in the bucket in eternity, you know, compared to eternity. We're not even a drop in the bucket. Think about it. Eternity. You know, infinite past, infinite future. And honestly, if you want to get down to it, if you want to really think about it, you can't even say past and you can't even say future. Think about that. Think on that. Once you get out of this, this the confines of this, Reality, this side of eternity. Oh my goodness! If you sit, meditate on that. Sit and think on that. <laughs> See law, as it says, no tips. Meditate, think on these things. Hope everyone is doing well. I'm meant to say, hope everyone is doing well. Like I said, I may have said her, and you're blessed of the Lord, Amen. And as we were saying, talking about. Anyone dealing with the thoughts of this virus and everything like that. You know, I haven't mentioned a whole lot about it other than just saying pray for people that have it. And I know people are scared and everything like that. But you got to understand, look, I want to try to... I know there's some people that are still worried. And I understand there is. There is a virus. Amen. There is some, It was released upon us now you can disagree with me agree with me whatever you want this is non-political this is just something to believe because we're living in those days and the Lord didn't say how these things were going to come he just said these things were going to come I believe these things were released upon us for reasons biological warfare and all this stuff it happens it's happened in the past. It's happening now. It's going to happen in the future. Many other things to come. This is light. This is warfare light. Okay? You understand, though. I know a lot of people have died, but 99.9x, .9 depending on your recovery, I mean, your age and your health, the recovery rate of this is good okay this is brought about because they're pushing vaccines and all this other stuff okay you get me it was oh he's getting a conspiracy I don't use the word conspiracy I've not mentioned that in a long time because you know what when you say the word conspiracy you that word was invented whatever, 10, 20 years ago or something, conspiracy theory. When you say that, and then 10 years later, you find out that what you're talking about was true. That was a word to relegate stuff in a category to make it seem like that 
the person talking about is crazy and they just belong in a different category, okay? So I don't use that word, oh, conspiracy theory. That's just conspiracy. People, pray and ask the Lord to show you things in his word and things going on in the word today and you will not believe what the Lord will open your eyes and show you that is going on out in this world and in the spiritual because what happens in the spiritual will manifest and will ha and happens in the natural. But see, we're too in tuned to what's going on in the natural keeping our heads down, doing this all the time, that we can't be in tune with the spiritual long enough and the Word of God and in prayer that we can't see what's going on. Amen? We're too blinded to the things that's going on. And we got our heads in the sand. I'm not fussing. I just, that's just the thing. Nine times out of ten. I'm going out and I'm looking at, when I'm looking around, we stop at a stop sign. I look over and the person in the vehicle is doing this on their phone. They're going, Doing that, tapping on the phone, waiting for the waiting for the light to change. Even driving, sitting there, holding the phone, at, at steering with that hand, and they're trying to type and looking at the road like that right there. Can't, cannot stay off the phone. Too busy in the natural looking down. Instead of in the natural, instead of in the spiritual, seeing what's going on as it manifests in the natural. From the spiritual manifesting into the natural. You could only catch this. You know, if you could only catch this in your spirit right now. Those people entering times now. Am I saying we're entering into the, the we, we've been in the times Jesus talked about for a long time. Earthquakes, pestilence, wars, rumors of wars. We've been in that for a long time. When are we going to enter and what we call the days of revelations, I think we already have in some ways. It's Revelation is past, present, and future. Amen. The churches it talks about, of Asia, it, yes, it talks about churches that were back in that day. But those are reflections of churches that are right now. Amen. At look in there and see and think and look at those churches in there and think of some churches that are around now. and other things going on that you can see in there. Am I saying that everything that's, all of a sudden these things are gonna start happening tomorrow? No, I'm not prophesying at all. As I've said, I do not prophesy unless the Spirit of God comes upon me and says, you say, thus saith the Lord. Look how many people recently have gotten trouble because of that. <laughs> you just you gotta catch it when you get those <laughs> you get those goosebumps and you feel it, you know, the, the spirit of God moving on you know, you understand that I mean this so many things that God's wanting us to be in lockstep with him in tune with him Walking daily, side by side, in tune with him. Don't cut him off. Stuff like this, I, I, and I, I point this out because, why? Because I see, just just because I see so many. The youngsters like this are headphoned up with this or, you know, and, you know, people say with their iPods and everything, but generally it's just right here, listen to music and on, uh, on social media or doing something, playing games on this or something like that. And I'm not saying that's bad to do, you know, sometimes for enjoyment and entertainment or something like that, but it's blocking out what God is trying to say to us and try to, trying to lead us and use us in his will amen if you're on this on this head phoned up and everything like that and god's trying to talk to you amen saying hey it's time to pray it's time to get in the word of god amen i want to anoint you for a work amen hallelujah but yet i'm too busy 
Imagine the Lord Jesus walks in the room saying, follow me. Well, give me about 10 more minutes. I'm on Candy Crush right now. I got to finish this book. I got to finish this level here. <laughs> Can you imagine? For God speaking directly to you, saying, right now, take those, and I, and I, I guess I'm picking on the the phone, the the you know the the cell phones, and uh, you know, I, I, I guess I should just call them entertainment centers or entertainment units right now instead of cell phones. God telling you when your head phoned up and got that, get down right now on your knees in prayer. I've got something I want to tell you. I want to show you something. I've got a mission for you, amen. I want to anoint you with the spirit of the Holy Ghost, amen, and do something for you. And what you say is, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm, okay, give me, yeah, let me, I've got to update Facebook, I've got to, give me a few minutes. Lord, help us. The distractions of today, cutting off the blessings of God. That's not just this, that's computers, that's the things of the world, everything that's been put out by man, and like a, by man, and like I said, one of the other videos, what is it? Back in the early 80s, I, talk, I mentioned the, the preacher Lester Roloff died in the early 80s. He used to talk in the early 1980s, like 1981 82. Talked about the TV, hated the TV, didn't have it, said it was just a tool of the devil to distract you from the Word of God, from hearing a, 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 the Spirit of God talking to you. And he was absolutely right. And it still is. Amen. But it's gotten worse with all these other things going on. Amen. <laughs> Lord, help. Now we have all this other technology. And we're living, and I, a lot of people have probably heard this word, in a technocracy. We're being enslaved to the technology that we hold so dear to our hearts. Whew, we need to set aside. You know, we used to talk about setting aside a certain time, getting inside our prayer closets, set aside the time if you can put it down. I've seen some people that just can't put it down. They can't put their phone down. They can't put the computer down. They can't, whatever it is, you set aside some time for God. He said, just give me, just give me 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. Give me Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day, it doesn't matter. For worship, to come to my house and worship, to lift your hands up and praise and worship me for what I have done for you, amen, hallelujah. And I have done so much for you, which he has, amen. Not that he has to remind you, you should know it, you should remember, and you should be Hallelujah, on your knees, praising him, lifting him up in praise and worship. Amen. Thankfulness, amen, because we are living in the age, what I talked about the other day, being unthankful, unholy, disobedient to parents, and all the other things it talks about. Amen. Never have I seen a day in my short tenure here. I'm getting, I'm, I'm I'm knocking on I'm knocking on 50 years of age seeing a change my goodness have I seen a change when I was coming up in school to the day of, to the to the, to the days of today when the children are in school now how they can't be disciplined and the way the children have just went wild you know why one of the reasons. Well, they can't be at school. If they do it at home, and someone gets, if they tell someone about it, well, it's child abuse now. But I've noticed the people my age and their children, amen, it just goes down further down the line. There is no discipline, amen, at home. 
They're allowed to go in the room and let the computer and let these things raise them. Amen. They become, there was a movie, I don't remember what it was, it was the babysitter. They called the, the TV the babysitter. And that's absolutely true. And it's gotten worse. The computer now and the phones and all this other stuff has become the babysitter. You don't know who the kids are talking to. Amen. That's why they have all these abductions. Amen. That's why they have all these things that happens to kids. I mean, these things I put in. And look in the description box. Amen. Of the things that I put there, amen, after the, uh, that I've been putting there for several months now, what they pertain to, missing children, missing persons, uh, uh, um, the, uh, the human trafficking problem and the sex trafficking problem. That's how it all starts right there, amen. Lord help. People, devil's on a rampage. He is that roaring lion going about up and down, to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. A darkness, amen, like we have never seen is coming over this land. Amen. And we, you and I, Christian soldiers, we need to be standing up, showing a lot, amen, to stand up against this darkness. Amen. If you could but see, and I don't talk about a lot of the stuff on here because it, honestly, it's for, for younger audiences, it's not fit to hear some of this stuff. I always try to keep this G ready for, 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 for everyone to hear, amen? Some of this stuff that, that, that happens. People, we got to get back to be where we can hear what God's trying to tell. For one thing, first and foremost, you and I, the church. Amen. Hebrews 3 and 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Amen. Don't harden your hearts. Amen. The first thing and foremost thing people want to do is they want to harden their hearts. They don't want to be told what to do. The pride of people. Amen. I, as, no, as I've noticed, amen, in this land is up and up. Amen. And I've had to ask the Lord to forgive me because I noticed one day my pride level had raised up. Amen. I wasn't kneeling like I should. Amen. And I need to do more of it. Amen. I need to do more kneeling each and every day before an almighty God. Amen. Confessing. Amen. That I'm not perfect. Amen. I know I'm not perfect. None of us are. Amen. We'll never be perfect 100% in this flesh down here. Amen. Well, one of these days. Amen. When I get to the other side. Hallelujah. Yes. I'll be perfect then. Amen. We won't need faith anymore, amen. But when we're down here, absolutely, we will need forgiveness, amen. We'll not always be perfect, amen. But we are to walk next to God, amen, and strive, amen, to be closer and closer to him, amen. By grace you are saved, amen. But we are to work, amen, while the day is young, amen. For night cometh when no man can work, amen. But he wants us to walk, as I said, many, many times a close walk with him. And if we're going to walk a closer walk with him, eh, it's not his will that any should perish with all should come to repentance, amen. But hallelujah, we are to walk and talk a Christian walk, amen. A Christian life, amen. Christ like to be the light shining on the hill, amen. And to do that, people don't want to see hypocrisy. They've seen enough of that, amen. So we're to get rid of all that stuff, the pride, amen, and uh, the, 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 what we talk about, it's, uh, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, amen, we're to get rid of that all, amen. If it starts bubbling back in us, amen, we're to get down on our knees before God, amen, and ask the Lord to give us strength, amen, to get rid of it, let his spirit touch us from the top of the sole of our feet, amen, and to get rid of all that, amen, and his spirit will fill us, amen, once again, amen. Oh, we could all use a big dose. You and I, personally, and in the churches, in the churches, a huge dose once again of humility before God. Amen. 
And once we realize, amen, <laughs> once we get it in our spirit once again, and you wouldn't think we could forget such a thing, which we don't truly forget. I think we know, but being human, you know, and his spirit lives in us, amen, for saved, amen. But realizing who God is, amen, need to be humble. Come humble to him, amen. Humble as a little child, amen. Because we are his children if we're saved and walking in his will, amen. Don't let our heart get hardened over time, amen. Sometimes we walk in this way and everything so long and all of a sudden, and we don't realize it sometimes, amen. Sometimes we don't realize that we get a little bit of pride in our hearts. Sometimes our heart gets a little bit hardened time to time. So how is that possible? You let the flesh creep in just a little bit and it happens so subtly. What is the enemy? How does the enemy work? It happens so subtly and so small that you don't realize how much it creeps in. But thank the Lord. We can come before him and ask the Lord to for forgive us. Amen. And we continue on. We get up, brush ourselves off, and continue on. Amen. Walking with him daily. Amen. <laughs> Thank the Lord for grace and mercy and forgiveness. Amen. It's not, the, not a shame. Oh, it's a shame to us if we, we let stuff creep in. If, if something like that happens and, and or you have a, a, something happen in your thoughts or something like that and you just and it, 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 it's to me, and I'll say this I'll use me as an example it's a shame to me because I feel like Lord I've let you down Lord forgive me and it bothers me it sets and it eats me up huh, why did I let that happen why wasn't I why wasn't I on guard like I should have been human side of me but thank Lord he's, he's, he's rich in mercy long suffering amen we ask forgiveness amen and he extends that hand once again raises us up <laughs> brushes us off pats us on the head, on the head to forgive you carry on amen thank the Lord he doesn't cast us off if it'd been on the old wall one thing and that's it. Amen. First John 2 and 20 says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Amen. Once you get back up, you, you have that unction from the Holy One to carry on. Amen. Hallelujah. To carry on in the work of God, because you know there are others out there. Amen. That need to hear the word of God. Amen. So don't stay down. Don't stay down in pity. Don't stay down. Amen. And like I said, when I get, I feel like, oh, oh, I'll let the word down. But you got to get past it. Amen. Forgive yourself because if the Lord's forgiven you, forgive yourself and carry on. Amen. Verse 20 said, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist. that denieth the Father and the Son. See, we're, we're not of that. We're not doing that. Now, I'm making different. Am I differentiating between sins? No, sin is sin. So what are you talking about? You know, you're talking about denying the, the, denying the very deity of Christ or something? Yeah, that's a serious sin. But in the eyes of God, you commit sin no sin is going to enter heaven. Amen. You have to repent. Amen. And let me say this. Pride. Pride. One of the worst. One of the worst sins. Know why? How many times talk about pride in the Old Testament? Was it not? Pride. The male Satan fall. 
when he was wanting to exalt his throne above the stars of God. Amen. God hates the, the sin of pride. It shows him that we're beating our chest. Amen. And we're, that we're something all great. No, friend, we're not. <laughs> we're, we're not that great at all. Oh, after we become saved, we became somebody in the Lord. Amen. But that's it. We're nothing of ourselves. Oh, but thank the Lord once we become saved. Amen. We become part of the family of God. Amen. Grafted in. Amen. Become circumcised of heart. Amen. Become sons and daughters. The true and the living God. Amen. Adopted in the family of God after the cross. Amen. Didn't have that privilege before the cross, but the Lord died on the cross. Amen. And abolished all that. He died on the cross and was laid in that borrowed tomb. Amen. And took the keys of death away from the devil. Amen. And became victorious when he resurrected on that third and appointed day. Amen. It was victorious over death, hell, sin, and the grave and all that. Amen. And we have right to the tree of life once again. Amen. When we get to the other side. Amen. Glory in this. <laughs> Glory in this fact. Amen. But we have to keep a humble, prayerful, repentant life. That's why I say so much. That's why, because I use me as an example. That's why I use me as an example. Sometimes you let some things creep in, and a lot of times, sometimes you don't even realize it. Not even mean to. It's not like you try. You do not like even try to. It's like, wait a minute. All of a sudden, you ask the Lord, Lord, and I say, look, take. Sometimes you have to every day take an inventory of yourself. Amen. Lord, if there be anything in me and around me that doesn't belong, especially inside of me, that is blocking me from your blessings, from your uh, most of all from the contact I have with you to receive of you and our relationship that we have talking to me and the Lord to get it out for me to repent of it to get rid of it and to not go back to it whatever it may be to show me what it is I'll repent of it that should be our desire cause we I and you I'm sure you do too want to walk the closest walk we can with the Lord amen with the Father, amen, and, and walk and talk. This is the way Adam did, amen, before the fall, amen. Have that close, tight, walking relationship, amen, with the Lord. I know I do. First John 2 and verse 24, listen to this, it says, let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning, if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue. Remember what we said, can be continuance. Ye shall ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. People, repentance. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of repenting. Don't be scared of admit, admitting that you were wrong or that something's wrong and you need repent. Don't let the altar at church or at your home or something, don't let that be something bad. See, that's that's something that's a problem. And I've noticed a lot of it, it's been in a lot of our Pentecostal churches, the, the preacher has made the altar a place of shame. That is wrong, amen? As I've said it before, I think I did a vid couple, two or three videos on Do not let anyone keep you from an altar, amen, for whatever it is. I don't care. No one, not the pastor, not anyone. It's nobody's business unless you want someone to pray with you. Say, will you come pray with me? And you decide to tell them what to pray for with you. It's no one's business. It is between you and the Lord, amen. And if you want to go every service to the altar and pray, 
That's nobody's business. Do not let anyone discourage you from going to the altar. I've heard preachers say, well, you shouldn't have to go to the altar every service. Well, whose business is then? That's between you and the Lord. That is between you and the Lord. If they don't want to come down and pray for you, tell them, that's fine. So if you don't want to pray for me, that's fine. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to meet the Lord in prayer. And if it's just me and nobody else wants to pray for me, that's fine. Y'all can just sit back, play the music, do whatever, go out the parking lot. I'll be out in a minute and you can lock the door. Not everybody is going down to the altar too to sit there and repent because they're just living in sin. People have genuine, that's like, who, 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 who was it? I can't remember names right now. <laughs> who, the woman that was praying to have a son. Remember the name? And the, the, and, and, and the priest. I think it was praying. Was it praying for the one praying uh, for Samuel? Can't remember her name. But praying for Samuel, and said that she would dedicate him to the temple, dedicate his service to the Lord. The priest thought she was drunk. It's almost along the same lines. Do not let anyone stop you from praying to the Lord. If they don't want you praying there, well. Go out in the parking lot. If they hate you praying so bad at their at their altar, well, I ain't gonna say that. It's not their altar. It's supposed to be consecrated that place to God since it's supposed to be God's house. Amen. The Lord is impressing on your heart. Whatever it may be. You know what? We need a lot of people at the altar. Pray. Maybe a modern version of us being in sackcloth and ashes. Amen. Maybe we need more people to be praying right now. Oh me. Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But 24, it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the initial start off, amen, to get right with God. And God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. But after that, if you go to the altar, you're seeking the Holy Ghost to be a, to, for that anointing, for a, a gift from God, amen. Praying for your lost family and friends and other loved ones, amen. Praying for the church even, praying for whatever, praying that you have a need or something like that. Amen. That's between you and God. If you have a need. And I'll say this. And I'm going to bring this up. This is the way the Lord headed this, this, this message right His teaching. Maybe this last scripture, First John 2 and 1. This is my little children. I mentioned this, this passage. I don't know, it seems like in passing different videos different times says, my little children these things write I unto you that you sin not and if he and if any man sin if any man sin I may mean, not be praying because you sin but if any man sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous and he's a propitiation for our sins not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world amen and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Amen. But if you have need, he is there for you.
He's there to forgive you for your sins. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Amen. You can ask the Lord for forgiveness, but amen. If you ask the Lord for forgiveness, if that's what you need, then that's what you need. Amen. But he's there for all the other things as well. People, don't discourage your people. Pastors, teachers, people in the church, don't discourage your people from going to the altar. We got a battle going on, amen? We got people that need help. You need to pray with them. You need they might they need might need strength. They might be going through a battle that you have no idea they're going through. They need strength. They need you to help you pray. They don't need you to be judging them, saying, "Well, you don't need to be going to the altar every time." You need to be down there praying with them. Amen. Pray at home. Pray protection around your house. I'm at the point now. I don't think it'd be about to, to pray around the borders of your property, pray around even to the borders of your city. Amen. Because the principalities and powers are running loose, they are streaking through the the spiritual realm. They are that once again they they along with the devil they are on the rampage. Yes, we've got more enemies than just, than just the devil out there. And unfortunately. A lot of them have, once again, what I say, the devil couldn't destroy the church, but he's infiltrated the church with these principalities, powers, the spiritual wickedness in high places. And the rulers of darkness of this world right now are pushing the agenda against this world. Amen. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. And we need to do that. We need to get our own selves ready and straight. Amen. So if you got anything, anything, me too, I preach and teach to myself too, that's hindering you and your service for the Lord. It be this, pointing at the computer, known people that, when I used to work at university doing computer support, there's no people that would sit for eight, nine hours a day on a computer working on a computer and then go home and spend eight nine hours sometimes longer on a computer playing a game their entire life sitting in front of spending their comp life on a computer their entire time it was their God Why would you bring that? Because we've let other things. That's just one example. Now, if you have a computer and use a computer, I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying, <laughs> no. When and how. The times to use and when not to use. God comes first in all things. Can we agree on that? Amen. God comes first in all things. He's not the comfortable shoe that you wear for a bit when you're in trouble and then when you're not in trouble and he's brought you through whatever it is he brings you to that you toss back at the back of the closet. Nowadays, and now I've held up the phone about, I don't know, 10 times or something like that. Nowadays, people, they get they're too, bi too busy with their heads stuck in the phone. Driving with the phone. I just say that because that's what the most, the, one of the biggest things that I see. But there's other things. It doesn't matter. You know, take the phone away, insert whatever. Game plan, going to the mountains, whatever. And I'm not condemning those things. Like I said, there's a time and a place for all things. God's given us the portion of time to enjoy the things of this world just as long as we don't enjoy it in the times that he wants us to be in communion with him and in his word. 
Amen. So be strong, be faithful, be humble, be repentant. Anything, anything at all, you and I include, is keeping us from the blessings of God, from being the best soul winner, the best warrior that we can be for God right now during the times that we are living in. Then Lord, I pray right now that you show us, you show me, you show anyone listen to this whenever they do what it is and how we can move it out of our lives if it's causing that much of a problem or you show us and give us wisdom of how to make the correct time and adjustments to where we can make the correct time for you. You're number one. You have to be number one in our lives. For we know we have a ministry. We're to be soul winners, first and foremost. And whatever work that you have for us, beyond that, show us that we might start that work. For we know that our time down here is short. So, Lord, turn us around to where our will will be in line with your will. And just as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? And we say the same thing. Can we be in agreement with that? Let us, all of our houses, let's have that same declaration that we are going to serve the Lord. No matter what it costs us, no matter what it takes, because our reward is going to be great in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for salvation. Said the greatest thing that we have because it's going to get us to the other side. All because of what the Lord Jesus did for us. That cross. He died on the cross. He said, it is finished. I mean, it is accomplished. It's taken care of, paid in full. Then he gave up the ghost. Laid in that borrowed tomb, the third and appointed day, resurrected. He rose from the dead and conquered death, hell, sin, the grave. He conquered all that for you and I. We might have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible says, Confession is made unto salvation. The Lord draws you, and the Spirit has to draw you to that altar of repentance. Amen. If He's drawing you to an altar of repentance, for salvation or drawing you to an altar of repentance because you have let something anything come in between your relationship with him and you know that you need to move it out of the way let the Lord move it out of the way because a lot of times sometimes we get too weak that we can't move it out of the way because of this so you have to allow the Lord to move it out of the way Cry to the Lord for forgiveness. Allow the Lord to move in your life to put a fresh anointing on you. The unsaved, ask, confess your sins before the Lord, amen, ask Him to save you. Believe the gospel, believe and repent. Repent from those sins, ask the Lord to save you, to come into your heart, and that you want to serve Him the remainder of your days, and He will come into your heart save you and you'll be on your way to heaven it'll be sealed the deal will be sealed right there amen and after that tell people make a public declaration amen it's a you know it's supposed to tell people amen about the lord amen after you become saved you'll be filled light you'll you'll, you'll it'll be you'll be in a different world amen 
all this old sins are passed away man said, said behold all things become new we, we become a new creature a new creature a new creation in Christ Jesus amen and if you ask the Lord to forgive you for something amen he forgives you because he said he's our advocate he argues our case amen if we ask forgiveness in Jesus name and we're saved he forgives us Lord God forgives us, amen, and restores us so we can carry on, amen, hallelujah, we thank the Lord for that, amen, thank the Lord for grace and mercy and the long-suffering, amen, because if we didn't have that, where would we be, amen, amen, God bless y'all, bless each and every one of you, blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you, amen, thank the Lord, and uh, Continue to remember those that are uh, sick and afflicted, those that are in the hospital, and uh, most of all the backs and the unsaved, and uh, you know, they come to the Lord, come back to the Lord before it's everlasting, too late, amen, and you know, stand strong against these things that are coming our way, amen, uh, like I was saying earlier, I don't know if I finished the thought about the, the virus. I'm not downplaying anything about the virus, people getting sick about it. Because I know there's elderly people, those that have compromised immune systems that are, you know, and they're even the younger people. But there is a recovery rate. But that is, for the most part, being hid from people because the enemy, the other side, the rulers of the darkness of this world, they want you to think and worry about these things why they they pushed this whole vaccine agenda and all this other stuff the devil wants you to worry the devil wants you to be in fear where we do a video last night the devil wants you to be in fear and be discomforted and and uh, be in bondage you know the Lord sets you free from all the fear and the bondage and you know being in fear of death and all that the Lord saved you he set you free from all that amen hallelujah praise God <laughs> Thank the Lord. Come visit us at the Word of Life Church. At the very beginning, you know, gives all the times and everything like that. And uh, hope it'll be a blessing to you if you do. And uh, if there's any other uh, announcements or anything like that, I can think of. <laughs> Way my memory goes. But uh, take care, guys, and uh, you know, be safe out there. And uh, stay close to the Lord. Amen. This is it live a humble repentant life before the Lord amen and uh, he will bless you and he will keep you close and use you in a mighty way I believe that I believe there's a lot of people out there that has a ministry the Lord's want to put you out on. I still believe that amen here in these last days amen he said he'll pour his spirit out upon us he's done that it was fulfilled that prophecy was fulfilled and it's still carrying on nowhere did I read it was supposed to stop at a certain point so think about that amen all right guys take care and uh we'll see you in the next video all right be good <laughs> bye now